Hey guys, I'm your host, The Age of 41, and welcome back to Video Game Legends Revamped. Probably the most, the third most famous of the holy trinity of Nintendo, out of Mario, Kirby, and Link, is Link. For those of you who for some reason don't know, Link is the protagonist of the highly acclaimed Legend of Zelda franchise. Legend of Zelda is an action-adventure franchise with puzzle and RPG elements to it. Despite the title, Princess Zelda, this game's version of Peach, except less annoying, usually doesn't play that big of a role in the storyline. By far the greatest Legend of Zelda game of all time, and what is considered by many to be the single greatest game in general, is none other than Legend of Zelda Ocarina of Time. Or, my bad, Ocarina of Time. It's actually pronounced Ocarina. Ocarina of Time is the fifth game in the Zelda series, and the second one chronologically after Skyward Sword. It is enough legends to get its own episode, so let's dive right in. Legend number one. Soon after the game was released on November 23rd, 1998, many people soon began to spread rumors that the legendary artifact, the Triforce, was in the game. The rumor was supported by pictures taken during the early developmental stages of the game, which did indeed confirm that the Triforce was planned to be in the game at one point. The final game did not have the Triforce, but many fans, ones who, have, who are good with Photoshop, cropped together fake pictures of a level called the Temple of Light, which supposedly held the Triforce. A more convincing theory involved learning a song called the Overture of Sages that allowed you to view, but not obtain, the Triforce prior to pulling out the Master Sword. There was another Triforce-related rumor involving a pyramid. It was supposedly a secret dungeon hidden in the haunted wastelands, and this desert pyramid supposedly held the Triforce. The pyramid can actually be revealed by playing the Song of Storms in a specific location. With the right orientation, the lightning flashes, illuminating a triangular silhouette on the horizon. Due to the desert's swirling sands, reaching the pyramid is impossible without cheats. However, close examination revealed a rock with a pointy top. The final Triforce-related rumor was that of the Sky Temple. People rumored that a Sky Temple existed. This was fueled by the fact that the first sage you meet is the Sage of Light, who was the only sage to not be trapped in his own temple. The most often quoted story of how to reach the temple was to use the Game Shark codes to prevent night from changing into day. Then, you had to kill hundreds of stall children in Hyrule Fields. This would cause an enormous skeleton to approach you, who could be killed with one hit. The skeleton's skull would then provide a warp pad to the Sky Temple, which also supposedly contained the Triforce. Legend number two. There are several legends about strange enemies that were and were not found in the game. One example of this is the famous Arwing. The Arwing is the ship that is driven by the members of Star Fox, Fox, Falco, Slippy, and Peppy. Now what does the Arwing have to do with Ocarina of Time, you ask? Well, I'm getting there. The Arwing appears as a hidden enemy that can be found by moving the data of the game around. The Arwing attacks similarly to most flying enemies, except it fires lasers. The Arwing was used to test the flight patterns of the dragon boss, Volvagia. It is unknown why the Arwing was taken out, but it can be found in the data of the Nintendo GameCube and Virtual Console versions as well. The other enemy-based legend is that of a creature simply known as El Puerco. El Puerco was a pig-like monster supposedly found in the game. It was supposedly unimaginably rare, and would only appear during the graveyard race against Dampe, or Damp, however you pronounce it. General consensus is that the initial sighting, if not a hoax, was an encounter with a very rare glitch with the enemy model of the Redid. Redead. Legend number three. The final rumor I have for you today involves an aggravating character known as the Marathon Man. The Marathon Man first appears in Hyrule Fields after Young Link has obtained all three spiritual stones. But that's not the subject here. Later on in the game, you meet him in Gerudo Valley. He mentions that he planned to run through Haunted Wasteland, but had second thoughts. When the Carpenters finish rebuilding the bridge that the Gerudos tore down, he'll challenge Link to a race from the tent to the bridge outside of Kokiri Forest. 
No matter how fast Link runs, the Marathon Man will always win by at least one second. Not even by cheating is it possible to beat him. There have been many tricks that people have claimed to help win the race. In the picture above, you can see a fake image of the running man losing. He has a text bubble that says, But you couldn't beat me. Your time was zero minutes and zero seconds. But I beat you by just one second. This is fake. But there have been many tricks that people have said will help you win, including warping, leaving the gain on for a certain amount of time, lifting the cartridge a small amount, etc. N none of them work. Even if you cheat to make your time zero minutes and zero seconds, he will still win. Well, that's about all I have for this episode. I'm your host, The Agent 41, signing out. Bye.